yeah, the new record is uh, a uh, almost lifelong work if you're under 21. It actually took 21 years to get round to doing another complete studio album. But this new one, Internal Riot, is uh, about time too. So far, we've had a couple of reviews. People say it does sound as good as the old stuff, which was always a bit like, can people like judge it against like something like the, the Daily Country died, and can it like get equal to that? Because that's got so much status by now. Twenty five years after it was recorded, it's like you think. But yeah, people rate it up there with it, which is great. It just sounds like the subhumans, as somebody else said, which is as it should sound. Drink, sex, cigarettes, for Cortina, household pets, bombs, war, famine, death, and I'm a very public The music's an ideal platform for entertainment, and within that platform, uh, I think the lyricists should and I do insert something worth saying, as far as I think of my own lyrics, I think they're worth, worth saying, otherwise I wouldn't say it. It doesn't get any easier, uh, certainly. <laughs> Certain topics have been covered already. You have to find another, another angle on the same topic, um, or new topics altogether, uh, without falling into the trap of naming names, i.e., politicians' names or certain events, which immediately date the song back to a certain time. I don't really like doing that. But I mean, there's still plenty of war still going on, as we know. Much more going on than has been since World War Two. Really, there's a different nature of war: the you know, war on terror. <laughs> Things that you would sing one song about, and they're worth like four or five songs, because the problem is just getting bigger and bigger. And it's all very much interconnected. It's people's apathy and people's love of luxury goods and uh, convenience and cheap technology. Uh, that's in the background of all these wars going on. And there's like two immediately impossible things going on at once, and, but they are totally connected. Because if people weren't so apathetic and like wrapped up in themselves, it'd be more less fearful of terrorism and less, you know, less wary of all the CCTV cameras watching their everyday lives. They'd be able to sort of talk to their neighbours and discuss what they thought and have more of a mutual social bond thing going on rather than relying on um, government and media to give them messages to say, stay safe, stay alone, stay in your house, phone up and report your neighbours if you see anything suspicious. And they were all, you know, subconsciously labelling ourselves as terrorists and our neighbours as terrorists just in case we do anything wrong and, and in the meantime they're bringing in more laws against terrorists but as, as the circle expands to define terrorism we're all going to end up in it it's, a, it's very Orwellian but yes I mean music is a really great space for putting out a message like that then people if they don't want the message or they know it already or they just don't like politics in their music can get off on the music and have a good time and uh, maybe catch up with ideas a bit later on. Uh, I don't want to be ramming stuff down people's throats because I don't like it, the idea of people doing that to me. So, so I'd do as you would be done by sort of thing. Yeah, of course it gets weirder and weirder. The older the band gets and the crowd stays exactly the same age throughout history, you know, 50 to 25 or whatever. It's 99% of the people who go to shows. Um, yeah, it's weird, but if you don't act to your age, you see what I mean? If you don't act like you're 40 odd, like 40 old, you know, what's the word? Uh, middle aged people are supposed to act, whatever they're supposed to be. Forget how old you are, forget how old they are, and just sort of smile, be happy, and just try and keep it as level as possible between the two age groups. I mean, there is the gap in age also creates a larger gap of perception between crowd and band. And uh, we get put on pedestals a bit, like, way too much sometimes by younger kids. And people who are our age are much easier to talk to on a level state. And it's like the idea is to keep that level experience of conversation between people. Just like, we are no higher nor lower than you. And it's just like chat about anything rather than, there's a lot of like, wow, I can't believe I'm stood next to you stuff. It's just like, whoa, this is not what punk rock's about at all. Yeah, bands should reform as long as they feel they can still play to the level that people might expect of them. I mean, uh, people love these bands, and if they, they come out and they've just played all slow and they're acting all like rock stars because they're older, 
and they haven't got the energy, they, they just shouldn't bother doing it. It depends whether they're doing it for the money or for the fun of it, and you can just about tell with bands which one it is. Bands doing it for the money and just go through the motions. Bands doing it for the fun of it, like the Buzzcocks, for instance. They just, they're just messing up their songs because they're a bit too drunk on stage and they don't care, they're just laughing about it and they're just like, oh, that's not the same as the album. It's just like, get real, of course it's not the same as the album. It's live, they're 50 now or whatever. They're having fun and that's good to see. So yeah, oh, sure, music's great. Reform it, reform it. What else are you going to do when you're 50? Bombs and war and famine and death and I'm a fighting public, cause us!